Hey folks, welcome to the Do-It-Yourself Dad channel. Today we are playing around with a new security system. And you notice up there, we've got our old WISE system. And it's been a good faithful system and it's a great budget solution. I've got a whole bunch of videos on that down below if you wanna check out a good budget solution. But today, we're gonna to upgrade and check out something new. And this is what we're checking out. This is the Eufy ProCam 2. It's a 2K wireless camera, so that you don't have to run any cables to it. You don't have to run uh, video cables or power cables to it, which is kind of nice. And it's got 2K resolution. Another cool thing, if you notice on the box here, there's another little contraption that comes with, and that's the base station. It's got storage on board. So it stores your stuff in the house instead of out on the cloud, makes things a little bit more secure. Um, but it's got 2K resolution, which is great. Uh, a little bit upgrade, you'll be able to check out license plates and whatnot with it. So let's get this thing installed. Now I actually reviewed a 360 cam, which is really similar to the Wise Cam Pan on the channel, and I loved it. So I'm really excited to see how this thing works out. Let's get inside and get this thing set up. All right, now I'm not a big fan of unboxing videos, so let's make this as quick and painless as possible. So here is what comes in the box. You've got your base station that's got the storage on it, your power supply, two cameras, instructions, mounts, and actually two different kinds of mounts. We'll show that in just a sec. A uh, Cat5 cable to hook into your modem. That's That hooks into your modem and all the other mounting hardware. Um, now, one of the other things we're gonna check out is I actually have some cameras from one of their older systems and we're gonna see if you can use those older cameras on this new system. Because if you can, that's a big kind of bonus. But let me show you real quick something I think is kind of cool with the system on top of just how it all works is it truly is wireless. Um, this is the camera here. If you pop this little thing open in the back, that's how you would charge the camera. But mounting the camera, they've got a pretty cool system. Um, you've got these mounts, you screw them to the house, and then this little guy threads into the back. It looks like it's a standard thread size. So if you've got any other kind of mounts, they should work. But another neat thing that they've got in here are these. This little thing you mount onto your house and it's a magnet. It's already stuck to it. So you can, really strong magnet, you can attach it to the house and then if you need to move the camera, it's very easy to move. Now the downside of that obviously is these can then just be pulled off and taken because they're wireless. So you wouldn't want to put that somewhere where these are easily grabbed. Maybe up high that would work. But if that's an issue, you can also just use these and screw them in place. So that's that. Let's get into actually setting up the system. Now I just pulled out the instruction manual and it is a very short and simple instruction manual, but it did come with this right on the top. And what's neat with this kit, it is Apple HomeKit compatible. So you can do with that. It also works with Alexa and Google and all that stuff, but it has the Apple HomeKit going on with it too. Now pop and open the manual here. It goes over everything real quick, but this thing is all run through the app. Now I already have set up the app and another camera on there. So if you wanna check that out, there'll be a video linked somewhere down below that'll have all that with the last camera because it all runs through the same thing, which is nice. It all runs in the same ecosystem. So we're gonna download that app if you haven't already, and then we'll get going from there. So we got the app popped up on our phone. You already gotta make a little login, but you can take care of all that. And then you're just gonna hit add device and you're gonna tell it what you are adding. So you can go through all their different devices here. We are adding the home base two. So that's that guy. And we're just gonna follow the directions. So follow along with me, we'll get this thing all set up and we'll get off to the races. So this is where things get interesting in our house. This is, we've kind of got our little home hub corner here. We have a modem and I actually have a second guy right here because I have too many things plugged in. If you're interested in home automation and tech like this, I've got a ton of videos and more coming out. So hit that subscribe button if you want to check them out. But we've got a Hubitat, Casita things going on, different Wise hubs, a um, whole home little mini server here in the form of a Synology uh, station. So we've got a lot of stuff, but we're going to plug into that guy and then get some power going to this and get her working. So I missed the little audio alert on the camera, but it tells you to hop back into your app here. And then we are going to connect the app to our Wi-Fi or connect our phone to our Wi-Fi and then scan the back of the base station there with our phone. And then from there, the app starts to connect. Home base receives a pairing request. Press the sync button on the back to accept it. All right, so we're gonna to go to the back, hit that sync button. So now with the hub set up, we're gonna go in here and add devices and we'll get our cameras themselves set up. So we're gonna keep the camera within one meter of each other, follow the, all the on-screen prompts. We're gonna get all these things set up. Ready to add device. Uh. 
Device was added successfully. Now we're mounting each one of our cameras a little bit differently. This one I've got mounted right above the front door and we've got her mounted right to the frame and that way it'll catch anybody walking up towards our front door or through our front gate. Now coming over here, this is where our old camera was and the reason it was mounted there was because we needed to get power to it. We ran it underneath the eave. This way, the person has to look at that camera as they walk up. Now an added benefit to that is as they walk up, they're gonna see that camera and hopefully that'll be a little bit of a deterrent if they're planning on trying to steal a package. Now the next place we mounted our camera was right here on our beam. So it'll give us a full view of the trailer, the truck, the cars, and our mailbox right there in case anybody tries to mess with our mailbox. Our next camera we have right down here down our side yard. And this one I actually mounted it to the old camera mount down here. This has These cameras have a standard thread size so you can use any sort of camera mount, not just the ones that come with the camera, which is nice. You can see the USB cable from the old camera right there. I suppose I could plug this one in but it would open up that little waterproof thing. And right here on the wall I've got one of these enclosures. Now this thing also uses that same kind of thread adapter right there on the back. So you could in theory put one of these cameras on one of these setups and I have a whole video on these that'll be linked down below if you want to check that out and this one does have a little USB cable so you could charge your camera without ever taking it off the mount. I may at some point move that to there just because that'll be a little bit easier to charge it when the camera dies. And our last camera we have mounted right here over the patio right here and it's going to give us a good view of the back door and also down the side yard. Now on this one, I use the other mount. This is that magnet mount. And the thing with the magnet mount is these things come off very easily for charging. Now the downside is a bad guy could come up and just go and take your camera. And we're gonna be playing around with that in a minute soon to see how quickly that thing kind of disconnects from your little hub back in the house. So if somebody did come up and grab it, if you would still get the footage before they managed to shut it off or break it. Now, once you've got all your cameras mounted and aimed, it's time to go in the app and set them up. And there's a lot of really awesome options within the app. Um, you can set all of your LEDs and auto night vision settings and whatnot. And here is the motion detection settings. And you can set up human only, so it'll alert you to only people or other options. But let me show you the really cool thing. This is what I thought made this camera so much nicer than a lot of the other cameras I've played with, and it allows you to set up multiple detection zones. So you can see here in my backyard, I'm setting up a detection zone for my side yard, I'm setting up another one underneath the window, and then I'm gonna set up a third one to the left of the window, and that way it won't trigger from people inside the house, it'll only trigger from people outside the house. And jumping back into the other settings, there's the power management. I have it set right in the middle at optimal, so it's not really conserving battery, but I haven't really noticed any issues. I have the recording quality set as high as it can go because I want to be able to make out things like faces and license plates and stuff like that. There's a lot of customization. There's also audio settings and the speaker and the microphone are actually really good. You can make up conversations outside and you can actually customize each camera differently depending upon where it is and what you want it to do. So now with everything set up, I wanted to show you some footage that I pulled straight off of my phone. So this is footage that was caught by an alert because it saw a person. This is me pulling down some Christmas light stuff off the front of the house. And just coming up here now is us in the driveway. We're just getting ready to head out, um, going to work and also going surfing. You can see the surfboards hanging out the back of the car. Um, you might be able to faintly hear in the background all the wind noise. It's really, really windy that day. All the leaves you can see blowing around and whatnot. But you can see here how crisp and clear the picture is. Um, my license plate's at an angle right there. So I don't know if you could zoom in and read it uh, just because of the angle of it. But... It's very, very, very crisp, very clear images you're getting out of these. So I've been really impressed with that. And then here's another shot in the dark coming up to the front of the house. And you can see here too, uh, as I'm moving, my face blurs a little bit, but it still does get a really good view of my face. So I think if you were using this as a security camera, even at night here, you would be able to make out somebody's face and their facial features really, really well. You can see how well it's doing in the dark. 
Now, one of the questions that always gets asked is how long between it's seeing motion and actually getting an alert. So we're gonna do this in real time. I'm in my garage, I'm gonna walk out into the driveway and you're gonna be able to see in real time how quickly or slowly we get that alert. So let's walk outside. Right now, I'm going underneath the cameras and there is the alert. And there's the other alert because it actually saw me on two cameras. Now let's go into the app itself and you can check out and actually see what it saw. And there is me going by with my camera, holding my phone. Pretty neat little feature. And you can see there that it actually does sync up very, very quickly. And here it is, we're gonna try one more experiment. And you can't see too well, because I'm actually going down there with one of my lights just went on. We're gonna go down the side yard. I wanna take that camera off its mount, the magnet mount. Now, I should be in its range of view right now. I'm gonna come up to it, I'm gonna grab it, and I'm gonna immediately hold down the little reset button on the back of it. You can see I'm holding it down. And it just beeped, so it reset. So I wanna see if this thing had enough time to transmit me before I took the camera. And this will let you know if those magnet mounts are actually a good idea or not. So let's see if we get an alert. And it actually sounds like I just got an alert on my phone. So let's see what we got here. We got three notifications. And we have backyard motion detected, which is the one that we are concerned with. I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna hold down the reset button on the back of it. So you can see we actually did get some footage transmitted before I managed to reset the camera. So there is a little bit, and if somebody does know to push that little button to disconnect the camera, it still gives you a little bit of time. So kind of good to know, not perfect, but good to know. Now with all the talk about the outside cameras, I should probably mention this guy. And this is the little UV360 camera that I had on the channel a couple months ago, and it dusted the Wisecam 360. It was way, way better. So I've been using that one to monitor the garage. So I actually have five cameras on my system, four outside with those Eufy uh, cameras, and then another one with this little Eufy 360. It's a cool little camera. Uh, it does a lot of great things, and it actually has more artificial intelligence, the AI stuff, than the other cameras do. It can also let you know about pets, cars, and all sorts of other cool stuff. So check out that video below. But I have it right now keeping an eye on my garage and my other projects. Uh, what's that, you might ask? Got another video coming out on that one, so hit that subscribe button and you'll see that thing soon. We built that right here in the garage. But the uh, kind of end opinion on these little Eufy cameras, I really like them. Um, there's a couple little downsides to them. The night vision isn't quite as good as some of the other ones, but it's really, really good. The battery life seems to be really well. I've been playing around with them for a couple weeks now and I really haven't noticed a drop in the battery even though they're in high traffic areas. So if this video helped you out at all, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, go down below, let me know what other kind of stuff you wanna see on the channel or if you wanna see that on the channel. And of course, thanks for watching.